Hey guys, it's Matt with Physics Junkie here, and today we're going to be looking at how you can determine where you will land using only in-game uh, information. And the first thing we're going to need is to look in map view and look at this little icon and get the rotation, uh, or rather the day of Kerbin, which is 5 hours and 59 minutes and 9 seconds. And we want to convert that into seconds for later use. The other thing we're going to need to know is how long it, it will take us to get to periaps from where we're at. Typically, we want to use Apple Apps. Unless you're, unless you're in a perfectly circular orbit, this won't work unless you use Apple Apps and periaps as the two main points. So we can get that by launching this little probe. And I don't really care about it, so I don't really care where it lands. I just need to get it to, we're going to pick, eh. 20 kilometers, so 20,000 meters, and we're going to see how long it takes us to get to periaps from here. And we, just, and we can see that through the map view. I'm not going to wait for it, so it looks like about about 37 minutes. Um, I'll get the final calculation on the next screen. Now the next step is to plug all those numbers into this formula. So we have the length of a day on Kerbin, which comes out to be 21,540 seconds. And over that we put our time till periaps in seconds, which is 2,350. And now we multiply that by 360 to convert that number into coordinates. And that gives us uh, 39.27. So next we want to look at, we want a visual representation of why we're doing this and how it works. So, on this map, I have highlighted the KSC. It's at 74 degrees, 0.34 west. Now, in Herbal Space Program and in real life, you could, uh, coordinate maps are divided into west and east, and both have 180 degrees to add up to a full 360 of a circle. And in these maps and in Kerbin, it's rotating from left to right. So that means we're going to have to counteract the rotation of Kerbin to figure out where we're going to land. So we're going to take 74.34 west and subtract our 39.27 from that to give us where our periap should be, and that is 34.06 west. Now that isn't terribly useful unless you can tell where your periaps is. And if you have a mod or a way to figure that out, you can stop now, you're done. But for most of us doing this on pen and paper, you're going to need to convert that to a starting coordinate, which will typically be your Apple apps. And to do that, we take 180, the other half of a circle, and subtract it by our periaps coordinates, which is 35.06. And that gives us our Apple apps coordinates of 144.93. Now, in coordinates, they go in all the point sections, so zero point whatever. That The max you can have is 60. So we want to round up to 1.45. Sorry, 145. Now, back to more math. If we just go ahead and take those numbers, we'll end up being about 20 kilometers off of our target. And that's because we're ignoring drag, we're ignoring deceleration. But if we didn't slow down at all, we would hit a, almost exactly where, almost exactly on the KSC, which is not what we want to do. We want to be able to slow down in time and come to a nice gentle rest on it. So to compute how long we need to slow down, we need to plug all our information into this reentry corridor formula. And that is simply periaps over Apple apps multiplied by 360, and then multiplied again by the average deceleration we'll be experiencing. So using numbers we got already, our station is orbiting at about, ooh, 12, no, 1,267,320 meters. And then our periaps is gonna be 20 kilometers, or 20,000 meters. So multiply that by 360 to get the coordinates, and then um, by your average deceleration. And you can get this kind of through simulating it or thinking about it in your head. Um, 
One of the ways to think about it is what is going to be the thrust on your craft? What is the average thrust it's going to experience or drag? So on Kerbin, it's uh, gravity is 1G, and we're probably going to end up hovering around that for our entire deceleration. Now, there'll be a little bit higher times, there'll be a little bit lower times, but it's going to probably average out to around 1. But I want to have some power on this landing, so I'm going to bump that up to about 1.2. And you can play with this. Um, the drag of your vehicle is going to come into play here. If it's a space plane, it probably has really low drag unless you flare it. If it's um, something very wide, it's going to have very high drag. So you're going to want to have higher numbers for high drag and lower numbers for low drag. And this even comes into play when we're talking about atmospheric bodies like the moon. If I want to slow down and not just ram into my target, uh, what's how fast am I going to be slowing down? Typically, we're going to talk about 1G, half a G. So that's what you want to multiply that by. How fast are you slowing down? So you putting all that into our formula here, we get about 6.817. And once again, that's in coordinates, so we want to just round that up to 7. The last thing we have to do is add the 7 to our 145 to get our final Apple apps of 152 east. And now to use this information, we want to make sure that as we hit 152 east, our periaps becomes 220 kilometers. If you start your burn at 152, you will end up finishing, depending on the thrust of your craft, anywhere from 160 to 170, and that'll put you far along the ocean. And if you're actually trying to hit KSC, you wanna make sure your accuracy is as pinpoint as possible. So now what I'm going to do is just wait until we're at 152 East, or rather very close to it, and undock my return craft and start to burn retrograde. And we want to make sure, once again, that our periaps hits 20 kilometers exactly when the craft hits 152 East, where it is now. And that is what will make us land at the KSC. Once again, if you're late or you're early in the burn, you will not be using the coordinates we just calculated and will end up in a different area, depending on if you started late or early. These are not the best crafts I've ever built by far, and I will admit that I have re-entry heating turned off because I didn't want to build a craft that was design I was designing, I just wanted to test the calculations. And as you can see, we're coming down right over the KSC. Now, this formula works with um, basically dead drop re-entries where you just drop a capsule from the orbit, and that will get you fairly close. But where this formula really shines is with reusable craft, like SSTOs and K-Prize entries, where you will always want them landing at the KSC so they can be refueled and reused almost immediately. Whereas the dead drops, you just get to save some money by getting them closer. And this formula will definitely work on any body. The big difference is you will have to incorporate um, your longitude and latitude, and this formula only gives you one of those because it is extremely hard to calculate latitude without getting into some trigonometry and calculus. But if I come up with a way, which I might, I've been working on something, I will definitely update this and let you know. Until then, enjoy these few glamour shots, and let me know what you think in the comments. Have a good one.